human nature. Human nature. When when we put something down every night, when we come home from work and we get changed, after work, we take off our suit, we put things in places. In the morning, when you wake up, Ellen, when you get dressed after getting out of the shower, what is the first thing you put on? Do you put on your socks or your underpants? What's the first thing you would put on in the morning? <laughs> Something I wouldn't say on tape. Okay. <laughs> so everyone, do you put your trousers on first or your shirt on first? Oh, of trousers. <laughs> trousers. Well, I put my shirt on first, Ellen. We are all creatures of habit. Human beings are comfortable with patterns that are the way we conduct ourselves, that we behave in our day-to-day -day life. Now, it's no different for people when they go to work. They're exactly the same. They like things the way they are. They understand them, they're comfortable. So when change comes along, when something happens out here that, tr that necessitates making huge change, you know it's very hard mm. and it's very difficult. And companies will go and pay consultants to come in, change consultants, big firms of consultants to come in and change things and often you know what they do they break things because they take away what is there and they don't adequately replace it so change I think is one of the most difficult things for large companies to embrace and if, if a CEO of a huge enterprise a big telco is looking at this massive change that's going on because of the proliferation from from Apple and Google and all of these other products that are letting customers connect with each other and with information, the internet, anywhere, anytime. And they say, we must change. And then they set about doing it. It can often be an agonizing process because there's so much resistance within the business to change. But that's the way we've always run our call center. Oh, if we don't have average handling time, uh, if we don't set an average handling time, what will we do? We might have agents talking to customers for too long on the phone. Oh, isn't that terrible? They could be building a relationship. They could be making another sale. So uh, these patterns and paradigms are going to have to change, but people won't like it. Man middle managers, Alan, that's where the change has to happen. Middle management. Senior executives can't just force change on middle managers. They have to take them on the journey with them. By first of all having a plan, by... Uh, so if you consider the status quo, the status quo is how things are today. If we want to change from the way things are today to somewhere else, you have to decide first of all where it is you want to be. So last time I spoke to you, it was about employee engagement. If, you go in, if I go into a company where the engagement of the employees is broken, but typically the majority of people don't enjoy coming to work, they don't enjoy working for their boss, they stay there because it's their job. They don't want to change because they're comfortable going to work because it's their job, but they don't like it. If senior management decide that they're going to change that, that they're suddenly going to win the Hewitt Award for being the best employer, they're going to become a highly engaged workforce. So much has to change. The environment has to change. Management behaviours have to change. Attitudes have to change. The way that they communicate and recognise employees has to change. And this takes, first of all, commitment from senior executives. And then it takes understanding and very strong behavioural change from middle managers. So whether it's changing employee engagement, changing employee customer facing employee behaviours, or changing the way you allow customers connect to connect, you first of all have to decide where you are, where you would like to be, and then you just go do it. And you forget about what you're leaving behind. Oh, if we change that though, we won't be able to do that anymore. So what? It's not about us, it's about the customer. And that's why if you call a company, often the managers are all in meetings. Where is such and such, oh, he's in a meeting, she's in a meeting. They're all meeting, having discussions about themselves. Who's worrying about the customer while those meetings are going? 